This is George Eastman's house in Rochester, New York, and this is the place where George Eastman would welcome guests. In the mid-1940s, citizens in Rochester said, we would like to use this house as a way to memorialize and to honor George Eastman. And what better way to do it than to create a museum of film and photography, a museum that was the first in the world to focus upon film and photographs as objects of its mission, to collect, to preserve, to exhibit and to interpret the treasures of the media that was seen in the middle of the 20th century as being one of the central focuses for the ways in which we understand ourselves as a people. The George Eastman House is the house of the image. In the middle of the 1990s, we began vigorously to collect digital imagery and we are very fortunate to have an opportunity to do an exhibition of Pete Turner's work. He is the man not only who rolled out the red carpet for color in photography, but he is also the person for whom the geometry of the image is deeply immersed within his nature. It runs in his DNA and we're very fortunate at Eastman House to have a chance to show it and to collect it. One of the magical elements in these images is the notion that the artist controlled it. The artist has an opportunity to work directly upon the image in a way the artist may not have enjoyed previously, and I think we see in the quality of this exhibition the results of the artist's hand. I see in color, and it's as simple as that. I I see in color and I looked around me, everybody else seemed to be interested in black and white, but I saw in color. And it was also a very new thing at the time. We're talking 50 years ago, so I just saw it as the right way to make pictures. The color palette that I work in is really intense. I like to push things right to the limit. Rolling ball was shot in Africa, out in the middle of nowhere. It was the only conceivable thing that would make a picture. I said, well, I'll wait for a sunset. And the ball of the sun, I found by walking back and forth, I could move it up and down, left and right, whatever I wanted to do. And that became important to me because I could make pictures. Every magazine was doing makeup and I got the makeup person to paint the lips with real red paint. I was in New Guinea. Some of the people there were still eating other people. It was a difficult place to shoot in. I found these wonderful pair of people that were made up the same. I didn't want to picture of people with leaves around and everything in the bushes. So I moved them as deeply as I could into the shadow area to make them really pop. I was driving along and all of a sudden I see these gigantic lifesavers. Hit the brakes so hard, I was lucky I didn't have an accident. I'm out of that car in no time and it was just geometrically and color-wise perfect. I always wondered what would happen if you opened up something and you had an eyeball staring at you. We tried it out on all different things, ketchup, salads, different things, but the peach can, you open it, it just seemed perfect. I look over to the left and there's a trash can, very colorful, but it's against an ugly wall. And I'm looking to my right and I see this wonderful ocean and sand. I'll just go grab that thing and bring it over to the beach and that's what I did. I was reading the New York Times, saw this picture of volcano erupting, but it was erupting in the center of a town. I called up an editor friend and I said, can you assign this to me? And he says, go tonight. I got on the airplane that night, flew to Iceland. He had me met and flown directly over to the desolation of this incredible thing going off. They had evacuated everything. I shot that volcano at first light and everybody thinks it's a special effect, but it's not. Bubble and stripe, we lit it with gels underneath and on top. But the most exciting thing is just before the bubble breaks, you get these moray type patterns. The George Eastman House has been the mecca of photography everywhere. And I am so honored to have this exhibit here, the way it's presented, this is just incredible. Well, the print is the end result of what we're all working for. You can have slides, you can have digital files, you can have all sorts of things. It's not the medium it was really made for. It was made to be on a wall. It was made to be looked at. Print permanence is A number one. 
we couldn't have an exhibit like this if these pictures were fading. And now we have a wonderful product, the Epson product, which will last through generations. And that's a pretty thrilling thing. And that's how we can have an exhibit like I'm having now lit with intense light. We used Solex bulbs because they're just right to get the full spectrum of color the way I see it and the way I think it should be seen. I printed this exhibition myself and I use the Epson Stylus Pro 3800. It's real easy to use. I love the way you load the paper into it and I love the way it's small. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful unit and it makes gorgeous prints. The speed of the printer is fantastic. Within a few minutes, you got a wonderful print and it wasn't so long ago that we used to have to wait a week to get a print back from Dye Transfer Lab. I like Ultracom K3 ink for a real specific reason. It has a luminosity to it, so your colors really are vibrant, and they work great with the palette that I use. With the 3800, it sort of boiled down a whole number of things, and they all get better, and the machine has gotten smaller, the technology with the K3 pigmented inks have gotten better, and we're now looking at a really wonderful tool.